to this week's webinar. My name is Kasim Al Rafi. I am the customer support representative as well as the Power BI specialist here for the iTrack 365 team. This week is going to be the fifth installation of our Power BI reporting um, series. This week, going over our fifth module, the training dashboards. Uh, we will be discussing the training records um, report that we've created. Uh, how to track open training tasks, how to look at your courses in a high level overview, as well as the employee reports card, as well as the data integrity reports. Um, overall, this dashboard is used to track your training management system, um, the tasks that come with it, and the course tasks that come with it as well. So without further ado, let's begin. We can see here that it is very similar to the procedures uh, report that we have showed off last week, um, or last video, if you're watching this um, on YouTube. The layout is very similar on the left-hand side here. Um, and the first dashboard of training records, we have the training task overview. The way this report works is it starts by every employee. From there, you can feel free to expand on any employee to see how they are doing task-wise. Whether it's completed or open, you will see the due date, the completed on date, as well as the status. So we can see here that Darren Houston has still outstanding uh, his two SCORMs, a transportation of dangerous goods, and a WMIS exam. From there, we can also use the filters on the top right to filter by employee. So in this sake, if we look at Houston Darren again, we can see here that he has five courses, 20% completed, and four remain open. And on the bottom right, it'll let us know um, overall how, uh, what are the 15 most attended training courses. And if you filter by employee, you'll see that per employee as well. On the top right, if you want to look at it from the training aspect of things. So if I go back into the WMIS training course, it will show me all the employees available in WMIS. Uh, sorry, enrolled in that WMIS training course the training status distribution. So we can see that 40% of all employees have completed their WMIS um, training tasks, whereas 60% still have to um, complete them. Now the best way to track open training tasks would be on this second tab called Open Training Tasks Overview. It is very similar to the first one. The only difference is that this will only show the status code of training tasks where it is open. So if we go here and we look at that same WMIS course, we can see here that Jeffrey, Tracy, uh, Mela, Kathy, and some other users all have their status overdue, and they were due on these specific dates. On the right-hand side here, you will see a little bar chart showing you how long the task has been outstanding. So for Jeffrey's sake, we can see that it's been uh, 2014 of December. Therefore, he has over 2,500 days of that task outstanding. Obviously, this is demo data. No task should ever go that long but it is it lets you understand how long it takes for your employees to finish their their tasks if i remove the women's filter it'll show you it um, as an accumulation for all your employees so jeffrey being the longest whereas michelle's being the most diligent from there we can look at our employees as well just like we did last time so if i open up jeffrey shaw's account we can see that these are the training tasks that we have open and these are when the due dates are. Okay. The other thing we can do is we can filter by job role. So if I want to see, for example, all field staff, right? It'll show me that Diane and Judy are here. These are the open training tasks they have within that job role. Okay. And this is the second dashboard. The third dashboard being the course overview. So as you can kind of see, I like to keep things very simple with my reports. Everything is laid out the same. On the top right, we have employee name and courses like we did for the first two reports. We have a quick training status distribution that we can look to see the statuses of our trainings. Um, should we click on any of the unimproved, we will see the left-hand table has been filtered to show all the unapproved training records or courses. And on the bottom right, we can see the 15 most attended courses. So from there, if I were to click WMIS on the bottom right, we can see that the filters uh, have been applied. We can see when the recertified dates are coming up. 
and if the training has actually been approved or not. Now, the difference between a training task and a course, um, these training records and training task overviews will show if the training task um, needs to be completed. So if there's an exam associated to the course, has this person completed that task? Have they submitted the proper documentation and the proper proof of certification? Whereas the course itself would be, if you look at Greg here, he finished his task, he submitted the proper documentation, therefore he was approved to be certified for WMIS. So this is kind of a way to see your tasks as well as your courses and training records that are available. And much like the training tasks, we did the same thing for open course. So we can see here on the right hand side, we have employees with most overdue recertifications. We have the due date slider on all of our um, reports. And we can see that if we actually click Shilpa's name here, we can see which courses have been overdue and they need to be reapproved or um, are they still outstanding? So if we close these off and they're not unapproved anymore, make sure we clean up the system. So it's a really good way to manage how the courses and training is looking in your environment. Same idea with the job role, employee name and courses, much like the training tasks, you can filter for all field staff to see how their training courses are doing. Now the courses and training tasks will overlink sometimes, but it will let you see these superseded or these recertified dates, whereas the training tasks will only really allow you to see the due dates of that task itself. And the fifth report, much like the procedures Power BI, is the employee report card. So what the idea here is, is you go into the employee name. For this example, we will use Diane Fritz. We can see her job roles. We can see her employee length. So Diane's been with us for 20 years. The percent of tasks completed as well as the percent of training approved. So we can see here that these are the training tasks she has completed. Here are the training tasks that are overdue and if she had any open. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to take a screenshot of this report and you can use it to send it to your employees during safety meetings, during quarterly reviews or whatever it might be, to let them have an understanding of how they are doing in regards to the training system. Yeah. And the final one that we've done, and this we do want to push out to the procedures dashboard eventually, but we do have the data integrity report. The idea, the idea behind the data integrity report is it allows you to see your data and where the gaps are. So for example, if you look at the top left, we have one called open training tasks without due dates. Now the cool thing about this is we can look at this and say for demo user two and demo three that these first aid training tasks do not have any date assigned to them. So if I hover over to the right, you'll actually see the activity ID in case you wanna put this into the URL browser. Right, but as you go through the list, you can then see um, which employees have these tasks assigned to them. And if it's a reoccurring one, like score pages and quiz, for example, maybe there's an issue with the setup that is not properly assigning your due dates. On the right hand side, we have closed training tasks without complete dates. You want to make sure your data that was submitted by your operators are being filled out 100%. So any of these um, training tasks without complete dates will allow you to understand, hey, if Diane really finished WMIS, what day did she finish? And even was the certification even applied to that um, WMIS course or training record as well? So it allows you to go back and understand how everything looks. Same idea with the activity ID. Okay. Then we have our positionless employees. If you wanna make sure that users are in into their job roles to make sure that they have their um, procedure requirements, training requirements, or any um, any assignments there, we want to make sure that that's being set up correctly. So we can go into here and make sure everyone has at least one job role. Um, for more information about job roles, there is a video on our YouTube called Training Module Job Role. I do recommend everyone go and watch that. Then we have courses without recertify. This won't always be a negative. So for example, if we're looking at the iTrack CRM portal intro, that's probably just a one-time thing. We don't have to get them to recertify. However, for some of these, we do want to make sure that if it's a one-year emergency, for example, that it recertifies every year. Then we have employees without employment type. This is just kind of a nice little way to keep your employee data clear. It helps you understand who's a contractor, who's an employee, and just that full-time versus contractor's data uh, integrity with the employee record. 
And the final one is just the employees without start date. If you want to keep your HR set up correctly, this will allow you to put in when that employee started just to have a really good understanding of what the turnover looks like at your company or how long people are staying. And it also helps the employee report card as we do look at employment length as well as employment type. So overall, these are the five reports that come with the training module. As you can see, they are pretty simple. They are just a couple of grids that allow you to understand how your training status is distributed and where are the gaps in your data. If you'd like this set up or any of the other four modules that we spoke about over the past couple of months, please reach out to support at itrack365.com. Um, as always, please follow us on, on LinkedIn and continue to watch our webinars and we do appreciate the time that you put in to watch these videos. Thank you, my name is Kostim and I'll see you guys in two weeks.